Seven in a small workshop with a 1340 Dyn and Glide Harley with the secondary drive belt broken. Uh, in order to get to this, uh, I've got to take the primary chain case cover off um, using Allen keys, and you'll also need uh, Torx keys to do that. Uh, I suggest that you get a metric, uh, sorry, an Imperial set of Allen keys, and uh, just make sure you've got a set of Torx keys as well. I don't know whether they do Imperial or metric, but uh, just a set of them is a good idea, uh, and a rawhide mallet so that when things are removed you can just gently tap around take about three or four minutes just be nice and gentle and then this which has never ever been a part in the 13 years of the bike this will all just just gently come away um, if you drain the oil first there's a little drain uh, little drain plug that sits uh, right behind this clutch basket actually on the primary chain case cover then you save yourself a fairly serious load of oil spillage when you when you pull this um, away. Yeah, it's probably pretty obvious, but uh, I also tend to uh, mark the length of the uh, screws uh, and sort of draw things down and also photograph things. Got a mobile phone that will do that, so and then bag things up. Yeah, that's a really good idea. So, those are long and short screws, the positions on the primary chain case. You can just pull the cover off, but be prepared for a hell of a lot of oil to fall out. Um, I think that was the amount of oil that came out of it um, and that's the case itself it's a small workshop as you can see okay uh, just purchased uh, one of these a half inch AF three quarter inch drive um, socket from eBay there are some silly prices out there but this one I got is a Brit brittle one for I think it was about 15 quid delivered which which is which is a good price and uh, this baby here which I haven't even taken out the wrapping yet was significantly cheaper there are a few of these um, this one is an inch and three sixteenths uh, you're gonna have to have uh, Imperial stuff to do these bikes um, yeah, and that this guy just fits on here. I'll talk talk about that in a minute. Uh, first thing to do then is to get hold of this thing and uh, just release it uh, cut, um, to get more play. Um, I think it's a half inch uh, spanner and a nine sixteenths AF for, uh, on those. Uh, okay. Uh, as you can see, uh, I've got a chock of wood that I just sawed off out, out, out in the backyard. Um, it did creak and groan, uh, and I realised that I needed to basically get not only get this on, but to get my missus to stick her boot on there. So whilst I was getting real tension on it, uh, she had a boot on there laying into it to keep it on because I was walloping it with this... Uh, this rawhide mallet uh, and after a few wallops it got going but I strongly suggest that you get someone to lay their boots in here uh, otherwise it'll jump the uh, jump the nut when you when you hit it you, I think you do need to hit it to get it off anyway it's it's come and uh, because my um, belt is broken there this locking it into gear thing uh, was never going to work for me so um, I've got the front propped up against something and uh, that's worked so that's good news uh, I've just measured this just in case it's something to do with the um, minus 7.5 mil. It's something to do with the clutch adjustment. Uh, I got a decent pair of circlip plier removers, and uh, the circlip came straight out without having to gouge at it. Um, so that that was really good. Uh, a decent set of those circuit pliers that you can get about four, all doing different things, but they're worth it. I've used them again and again. So now I'm uh, going to attempt to remove this. Um, and just keep things in the same position. I've got a um, phone, the camera, and uh, I've already photographed this. So if there's any problems, I've got a climber manual there. If there's any problems, then uh, you know I can I can have a look at that. And I'm just pulling the whole thing off, keeping it like like so. Um, and pull that ring off there. Keep it like that, and uh, I'll photograph it. 
in a minute. Now, um, this just pulled out. I mean, I could just break this nut here, this Allen. Again, it's an Imperial Allen, so it's worth getting a set of those if you've got a Harley. But I'm just going to pull this out like so uh, and get to the nut that's underneath. Again, I'm going to photograph this this stuff when I when uh, before I forget how it looked with, on, on, on my phone. Um, yeah, I've, I've just wound this out. Um, so uh, I've got to do the uh, tensioner next, uh, uh, and then the whole caboodle should just uh, just prise off with the chains, the two sprockets. This uh, is free to rotate now, so I rotated this block of wood uh, out from underneath the sprocket, and I'm going to use this screwdriver now. I think just to prise it off getting it in there just to gently prise it off trying to cause just get as little wood to drop in I mean I know it's crude but you know uh, there was no special tool available in this country and getting anything from the states it's just twice the price of the product to get it sent and that's come out and as you can see there's uh, quite a lot of the wood took quite a beating but it's just a piece of gash wood probably about an inch wide so really really happy it did its job all right, and now uh, 9 16 spanner here. We'll loosen the uh, tensioner, giving it a bit of a tap with the old rawhide mallet. Normally I hold this, but you get the idea. Uh, and that came away quite easily. So, uh, yeah. All right, the uh, nut and washer have come off. And uh, this, the uh, bolt is captive in here. It's on a grid day, uh, sort of slider here. Uh, and uh, I, this ain't going to come off. It'll just sit right around the chain, as far as I can see. Uh, if there's any change, I'll let you know. But uh, this should just all pull away with the, with the uh, two sprockets. Well, so sort of without any extra um, leverage, this is just loose. And this also is moving. So I'm hopeful this whole lot will come off in uh, in one. One assembly. I've got some paper down, clean paper down on the bottom, so it's only a load of crap from the floor. Because um, I'm working in a in a really tiny, tiny room here, uh, so uh, yeah, things are a bit tight. I mean, if I had two garages, it would be different, but there I, I don't. About 30 seconds later, uh, it's all just pulled off really easily by hand. Just make sure you cradle both sprockets, and um, the whole lot's on the uh, on the deck. So uh, I'll wrap that up to keep it to keep it decently clean and uh, stow it somewhere. Okay, uh, this pulls off now, like so. Uh, and then uh, I've got to pull this off. There's a special tool for it, but uh, I'm sure with a couple of screwdrivers I can just gently, gently wiggle that out. Yeah, there's a, a washer on the uh, back side of that, which goes against uh, this cover here. I just <clears throat> noticed a couple of drill points here. I'm not sure what they're for. Maybe they're to do with balance or something. I don't know. So I've just noted the position and I'll try and put it back the same way. Uh, I've just taken the static cover off, uh, which is down here. That's the back side of it. Uh, it feels like it's on the springs, but uh, that's because of the magnets. And what I did was um, I just used two... Um, Allen keys and I just basically hooked them in the back like that one the other side uh, and then um, put a pair of mole grips on and just gently worked it off um, don't go too nuts inside there because uh, clearly there's uh, a lot of wiring and uh, that doesn't need to be damaged but you don't need a special tool just just a bit of patience but you definitely because uh, your hands are probably all you do need to clamp um, a couple of mole grips on and then just wiggle it off and uh, yeah there, there is a, a washer there so just don't lose that so that's the state of play so far
Uh, interestingly enough, uh, that's the mid gear change. Uh, I got forward kit on uh, on my Dynaglide, and uh, this might be an opportunity to uh, get rid of this and somehow uh, find a blank, uh, some way of blanking this off and sealing it. Uh, but I don't really want to botch it, um, so I don't know. I might leave it in. I suppose a. Uh, because on the outer primary chain case you can buy a blanking plate. I suppose you could saw the thing in half but it would be a bit crude. So when this next uh, cover comes off, um, that will be a time to make a decision about that. Because uh, I don't want the mid-gear controls on it. OK, uh, apparently now it's the removal of this jack shaft. Okay, um, word on the block is that um, a starter motor doesn't have to come out to get this uh, in, in a primary chain case off. I've just got to get this bolt off, not the tab washer back. I've gripped it with small grips and um, put a rag around the threads, the splines, so that I, the small grip doesn't damage it. And that's just a simple screwdriver, it's a metric one actually. Um, and. Uh, it's moved easily, so but it feels like it's under some sort of load, so I've got to be really careful. It doesn't all spring out over the place. Um, yeah, well, let's see how it goes. Pretty inchy. Anyway, more importantly, uh, that's the shaft as it came out. I made sure everything came out together, uh, so I'll wrap that up and put it away, and uh, that's what's left. Uh, so hopefully, uh, no need to touch the starter motor and all the grief that would go with that because I think it would be rear exhaust off, rounding nuts, cutting the nuts, a nightmare. So let's hope this works. Okay, um, I'm on the other side of the bike now and uh, I'm just loosening off the um, starter motor nuts. I'm not taking them out, loosening them uh, and uh, I think that's the last thing before the primary chase comes away. Uh, I'll let you know. Yeah, I've worked on the here, you can't really see it, but I've spun the nuts back until they start clicking on the uh, threads. I know they're at the end of the thread, but I've left them in. Uh, and the tool I did it with is this. That's part of it. And the other part of it is this. Um, I cut an Allen key down to do the job but uh, there we are and that did it pretty much perfectly so I was pleased with that so let's uh, see what what's gonna gonna happen next okay and I'm locking these two guys one there and one below these guys here uh, I'm taking them apart or just backing them off right the way across the case cause uh, I don't want to. I don't want to leave the back end flopping around with a tight end front. So just easing everything off, one by one. Uh, I'll look up the um, torque wrench torque wrench settings later. But you don't lean on these guys. You just just nick them up, kind of wrist wrist tight. Just don't lean into it. Um, but I'm sure it'll be in the manual what these guys go uh, got to. Okay, taking all these out from front to back, those those are the uh, ones that are on the outside. The two near the stutter cover, one on the um, the mid mid gear change, and the three at the back there, which uh, which came out of uh, out of here. Yeah, there's a circlet there. Um, I think uh, that's got to come out as well, so uh, I'll get rid of that and see what happens. Basically, um, that circuit didn't need to come out, so you just got to tap with the rawhide mallet, mallet and wiggle. And that's what we've got. Okay, so now um, there's a couple of bolts to take off this lower plastic chain guard. Uh, I'm going to take off the mud guard, uh, sorry, the chain guard, the metal top chain guard. Then I've got to loosen that 
off there and hopefully swinging out the way um, and then uh, see if I can slide the belt around the sprockets uh, obviously I'm going to have to loosen this spindle off and uh, bring the uh, spindle as far forward as possible to give me as much slack as I can uh, and hopefully I won't have to touch the swinging arm. Uh, also I'm going to need to remove these two allen bolts um, to give me room to get the belt in so that's going to come off as well. Okay, I'm um, just going to take this sprocket off but I'm just going to measure the gap here between the sprocket and the case um, just to try to get the same on the, the same gap on the replacement um, I bought a replacement front sprocket or belt drive pulley, whatever you want to call it um, and then I'm going to get these two guys off and then um, put an impact driver on it and try and lock this up. Okay, um, to lock this up I used the old belt, wrapped it around, trapped it in here, just tapped it lightly there and just uh, hit it with a uh, rawhide mallet. Uh, and it's enough just to, just, just to hold it enough to get those Allen screws and bolts free um, yeah so uh, so the next stage after that is the uh, the big one well just back from that experience and it was absolutely amazing that was off in about three seconds um, fabulous I mean with the tool and that gun it's money I get to use it again but it did the job and um, I was really quite concerned about locking it the sprocket up but it, it, it worked the, the the sprocket moved a little bit but uh, it was just shocking it off absolutely fabulous um, brilliant so the front sprocket is off drive belt pulley and that's what it looks like with it off okay uh, move forward a little bit now um, since we last spoke I uh, got the back wheel off the uh, rear drive well, he came off and uh, went on easily and the belt went on uh, just by loosening this and pulling it out of the way the belt slides on around here and over the um, the front pulley uh, front pulley also went on using the, lock, the red Loctite uh, and uh, on my bike it only went up to 55 foot pounds um, and uh, it, it came up quite easy I didn't even need an assistance I just chopped the back wheel and uh, got the front wheel pushed up here against a concrete ridge so uh, that'll work fine uh, it is worth saying that uh, the, the uh, climber manual says that you need to basically start uh, loosening these guys off at the back of the engine and uh, there's a couple around the front here um, you're supposed to loosen these off uh, so the transmission of the engine can move about um, so that you can fix this guy up, you loosen them off, fit this, and then you, you know, when it's all fitted right, you tighten them up again. Um, to be honest, the the rear the rear transmission bolts are a real, real shit to get to basically, and uh, so therefore, what I've what I've done, uh, as I really haven't moved the engine and gearbox around, is I thought I'd offer this, this this inner primary, up, and um, it seems to work really, really, really well. Everything's fits on uh, just cover this with tape so that uh, it doesn't wreck the um, the um, oil seal uh, so I'm hoping that's all right I took some advice from uh, from a mate of mine who's uh, done this job um, if there were a problem and it doesn't align properly then then I think we just loosen these two two at the front and maybe wiggle the engine around a little bit um, and just leave the gearbox put uh, but there we are that's that's where I am so far um, yes, yeah, since, since uh, we last spoke, um, that was my attempt at blanking off the um, cross shaft for the mid-gear change, uh, silicon sealant plus um, rubber plus bolt, very, very short bolt, um, seems to have done a job, I'm quite happy with it. Um, 
re reuse these guys uh, lock tabs I know you probably shouldn't but they looked in pretty good nick I'll never use them again hopefully I won't have to do this job again but I, I probably you should buy new ones um, this thing here was more of a problem um, when I tried to put the old uh, jack shaft bolt back it's very thin and long and uh, even though I used the climber manual I think it was seven newton meters or whatever the foot pounds equivalent is uh, it actually sheared um, unfortunately it goes in on a spring so you can't really feel it and uh, it sheared so I had to go around the other side pull the starter motor off and basically pray that uh, I could still get hold of the uh, busted off thread fortunately I was able to and spin it out with much trepidation uh, I reapplied um, a new one and uh, it went in um, fine I took it very very gently waited gently teased it um, and it didn't go over the edge you know how things go when they're threaded and it just went up and I took it to the minimum nine newton meters uh, seven sorry so uh, that's where I am at the moment uh, and I'm continuing to put this lot back together again oh yeah uh, and the other thing was behind this now it's a bit naughty me really but um, I replaced the rear sprocket and uh, I also replaced the front sprocket uh, pulley as well uh, because it's such a palaver getting this off I thought uh, I don't want to revisit this again um, so there we are that's where we are at the moment and uh, here's the uh, the whole chain set as I took it off uh, so hopefully they'll go straight back on again uh, I've decided to um, clean this thread with meths uh, I've got some red Loctite um, as per the climber manual and I'm gonna put some of that on here and I don't want any grease on it so I'm gonna clear it clean it with that and uh, then, then put the chain and sprockets uh, back on I'm going to uh, clean these threads I'm, I've just done the threads there I'm going to clean these threads with this mess because you've got to put red Loctite on that as well as this could have done it after I put the sprockets on but best to do it now I don't want to have to take all this apart again so uh, I put it back on uh, with that thread cleaned I mean even if I hadn't I've got some isopropyl alcohol I could have sprayed in there and uh, undone the job but it was easy enough just to take it back off and uh, there is a thread in there I don't know whether it needs lock tighting yet but again I can clean that off if I need okay so this goes on next and down here uh, there's a thread inside there and I'm going to have to clean that out uh, when I want any oil out of it you know, so that I can apply the uh, Loctite one thing I need to say is just make sure that behind all this right next to the stutter cover is a washer that washer was part of the assembly I took off that's a spacing washer climber manual shows it just make sure that it's in there um, so it's the washer that goes next to this stutter cover and then the rest of the assembly goes on to it um, both of these are now on uh, loose bolt on there for the minute I'll tighten that up later to get the right tension and this uh, gizmo here the one it's officially called that's on there now I've got to really top these guys up with two drops of Loctite on there and on the thread in there I've just cleaned the uh, two bolts in uh, meths so uh, yeah let's, let's get on with that part of it okay um, I've just uh, just done this one up um, to uh, a torque of 155 to 160 foot pounds uh, with this um, socket um, one and a half inch AF it's a brittle socket um, two dabs of Loctite red I think it's 262 on it 
uh, and done the same with the clutch nut which um, I did 110 about 115 foot pounds two drops on uh, each thread on, on each bolt um, I used this block of wood but this time I covered it in a rag to stop it splintering it's worked perfectly um, couldn't get this th this on I thought I, 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 because uh, I kind of forgotten that it was on a reverse thread but once, as soon as I realized that it went on I thought it had the end had threaded or something I couldn't work out why it wouldn't go on but of course it's it goes on the other way so that's that's all good um, yeah so that's back on so uh, should be an easy assembly from now uh, tension this thing and so on anyway that's me for the minute speak to you later okay um, I put the push rod tube in and uh, the plates I left that as it was and uh, although it's a bit of a fiddle um, it was was right the groove was right and this uh, clip's gone in and I just gently very gently tapped it with a with a screwdriver to just make sure it sprang back into the uh, into the groove properly so um, that would appear to be uh, to be done now um, I think I need to tension this guy so finally I've uh, tightened up to 25 foot pounds I use my camera to work out the position uh, of this feels about right uh, I'll check it again later so all I gotta do is put these guys on uh, I need to be careful to sort of put these into the right position because there's a bit of slack there can cut off bolts apparently and put them in and unscrew them later on but I think I'll, uh, I'll just work it gently with my fingers uh, just um, in case you just think a bullet against that's it and then it remains just to put on the, the footrest and the chain guard well I've uh, just put the uh, primary cover on uh, just a couple of things to say these two um, long bolts here or long screws there's a, uh, a kind of rubbery type washer that uh, you need to make sure doesn't fall off and uh, is basically um, sits properly inside there that's easy to see with a torch um, I filled this the primary chain all through that uh, the climber manual talks about uh, getting very long versions of these cutting the heads off putting putting a, 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 a slot in there so you can unscrew it because the uh, overall uh, gasket is very, is very long and it's particularly the bottom it sags uh, I didn't do that I was just very careful, um, just just very gently worked the bolts in, um, went round at the bottom, just put my hand underneath it just to get it to, uh, just to take out the slack and get the holes to meet up. Uh, I used a, a very thin uh, bolt just to wiggle it um, or a very, very thin screwdriver would do the same but there's certainly no need for all, all that nonsense uh, and obviously brought these up by degrees uh, so that uh, you know it doesn't distort the the cover that's all gone on fine uh, so there we are uh, all I've got to do now is just put these little bits on uh, put in footrest and uh, and uh, dry belt cover and stick the battery on round the other side so uh, unless there's any other issues uh, I'll sign out and uh, hopefully that that helps somebody Anyway, cheers, bye.